there just a very quick video uh, just to go through um, risk assessment and paperwork a um, bit more boring not going to see much in the way of face paint but it's an important part of your business and you need to know why you're doing a risk assessment and how to do one more importantly I often get a lot of face painters message me and say I've lost my risk assessment I don't know how to make a risk assessment what do I need to include can I just borrow yours and the answer is no I'm afraid you can't just borrow a risk assessment risk assessments are very very personal okay they're very personal to any business and what I might deem a risk for me and my business might not be a risk for you and your business so it's important that you don't just take a file from someone or print a file off from the internet without fully understanding what's in the file and and know exactly what, what what's there for you um, just by having a deeper understanding of a risk assessment it can only help your business okay you tend to find risk assessments are more for big events so we're talking council-led events we're talking um, carnivals we're talking um, those those big large events where they need to see your PLI they need to see um, all, all documents you don't tend to give a risk assessment to um, Mrs Jones that's just booking you for a few hours but it's important that you know what's in your risk assessment because you will come across the same sort of issues okay so a risk assessment is basically a document you create which identifies hazards and risk factors that have potential to cause harm to you, your client or anyone else around in the area. Um, the document determines the ways to eliminate such a hazard. So an example of that, a common one for me would be children touching my paints, okay? And that carries the risk of cross-contamination, it carries the risk of the child being injured, so I minimise the risk myself personally by setting up against the wall. So I would come in, um, I'd set up maybe against this wall, have my kit open on a table and then I would stand in front of my kit and I would have the chair to the side. That way I'm a physical barrier then to any child that would try to access my, my paints, okay? So that is an example okay so what will happen is you'll be asked for a copy of your risk assessment okay um, and like I said to you risk assessments very personal to your business okay what I have in my business might not be what you guys have for an example I stand when I paint okay some people sit when they paint so the risks that come with standing are different to you if you were sitting I don't airbrush whereas someone that does airbrushing they've then got to deal with the cords they've got to deal with pack testing things like that so it does change from business to business um, so this is why it's important that you know exactly what's in your risk assessment okay so a risk assessment um, before I go through that just very quickly how I've updated my risk assessment with COVID, okay? Because you're going to have to update your risk assessment for COVID, okay? What I've done is I've literally just put a paragraph at the beginning. You know, like where um, I say, let me just get the paragraph for you. I basically say this is the risk assessment of Fantastic Faces and Rachel Green. Um, then give them a bit of background about who I am, what I've done and how long. And then what I have is... Uh, a paragraph that addresses COVID and the risks. And I say that um, I use one sponge per child, per face, per colour. Um, I sanitise my hand between clients. The artist works in a clean and tidy area at all times. Artist has a large selection of brushes which are cleaned um, with soap and water after each client. And no one but the artist touches the kit. So by having that paragraph at the beginning, you're addressing all of those issues, okay? So, and you need to update your risk assessment as often as every gig, to be honest, because things change, okay? So, a basic risk assessment is like this, okay? So, we've got six columns, okay? This might be back to front with the mirror on the selfie, I'm not sure. But we have six columns, okay? And we have activity material, 
we have potential hazard that that may cause. We have severity, normally out of 10. We have the likelihood of the risk, um, and again, out of 10. We rate that out of 10, and then we have the preventative measures that are taken, okay? So, to be honest, this all out of 10 thing, it's a bit of a bump, okay? As long as you've got activity material, potential hazards that that may cause, and then the preventative measures that you will take, then you should be all good. So if I quickly go through my risk assessment with you guys, so we've got, say, equipment, allergic reaction, and I've put down here, severity is 5 out of 10, because it can be quite serious. The likelihood is 1 out of 10, in my opinion, because of the quality products that I'm using, and rate 5 out of 10. Um, preventative measures are taken if anybody we ask everybody when they are being painted if they've been painted before if they've had an allergic reaction if a parent does let me know that a child has had an allergic reaction in the past we will offer patch testing okay which means that we will paint on the inside of the arm 30 minutes later they come back if there's any issues then then they don't get painted um, if they suggest that their face is sensitive we will offer an arm painting but that is down to the parents choice okay so that's the sort of thing that we're doing okay um let me just read through this yeah always advise the guardian if the child experiences any itching or heat on the area it is to be removed straight away using water if an anaphylactic shock occurs, call 999, place child in the recovery position and wait. I know that seems extreme, but this is how you have to cover all your bases, okay? Again, equipment, face painting, chair tipping, child falling. Um, basically, what I mean by that is when a child enters my chair, as they climb up, they do stand a chance of tipping the chair when they're climbing into it. So again... The severity is 2 out of 10, likelihood out of 10, 2 out of 10, and rate 4 out of 10. Um, and I've put, I use a tall fold up makeup face painting chair. It's very sturdy, made of metal with a full covered back to prevent the little one slipping through any gaps. I hold the chair steady whilst the client is being seated. And when getting out of the chair, I also hold or anchor the chair to keep it steady. So again, we're just trying to minimise any risk that may occur from them getting in that chair. Um, we've got manual handling or lifting, so lifting a child into my chair. Um, and what I've said is I do not lift any child into my chair, the guardian must lift their child into the chair. Um, equipment, again we've got the potential hazard would be cosmetic glitter into the eye, any reaction to fixing agents. Um, and we've put before applying glitter I ask if the client would like it I will then ask if they're allergic to aloe gel is that's what I use if you use that to fix the glitter to the skin um, a small minority of the public may have experienced reaction to aloe so you must always ask um, <coughs> request that the client closes their eyes whilst you apply and avoid any stray bits of glitter getting into their eyes all cosmetic grade, all glitters cosmetic grade and suitable for the face. Um, you could also put in there that you don't apply glitter too close to the eye. Um, anything else that you feel regarding glitter, you can put in that area. Um, equipment, so we've got bling and gems that are attached to my design. And what I've put here is the potential hazard is choking hazard. Okay, small bits. We do paint small children. So I never offer bling or gems to any under threes as stipulated on the packaging, which it does on most gems. And when applying bling, I discuss with the guardian that it's a reusable piece and that it can be taken off again. Um, we've also got things such as clients, customers, members of the public, um, which is the activity or material. And we've got people displaying obvious signs of illness or other contagious issues. And the preventative measures that would be taken if a person appears to be ill or has obvious skin conditions, such as open wounds or sores, I cannot paint them. 
I cannot paint anyone who may who who is or could be contagious. I always use one sponge per child per colour, never using the same sponge to reapply the same colour. I always change my water regularly using a three pot wash system, which is the preferred method in the industry. This is pointed out very clearly on my disclaimer, which I refer to the client to. Also with COVID now, you would then put in here about washing brushes on the job using soap or water. If you're using alcohol, again, that would be where you put that. Um, we've got activity material equipment and then we've got potential hazard which would be contamination of products and equipment by myself or customers so the preventative measures that we would take um, ensure paints are out of the reach of children they tend to touch want to touch paints and equipment um, I keep myself between my kit and the line customers one sponge per child per colour um, applies to finger daubers and applicators uh, mention your washing your three pot washing system or whatever it is that you use um, and I also mention here that all my paints contain antibacterial properties that helps minimize any issues um, I've said that no one but myself handles my paint and uh, I've put if a product has been compromised in any way it is put away and cleaned after the event where possible if it is central to my kit, I will pause and clean thoroughly on site where possible. Um, and then we go through it some more. We've got working areas such as blocking the traffic, uh, blocking exits or the flow of traffic. I don't know how many times you've been in a fair or an event where you've been put um, in a really awkward place. You know, blocking a fire exit or it's just disrupting the flow of people. Um, so again, my risk assessment will say that i ensure the area where i'm set up to work is not blocking any exits or affecting the traffic flow if an issue is identified i ask to be removed to ask to be moved sorry to a more suitable area um we've got again another one here potential hazard if a child ingests paint um we've got Keep all equipment out of the reach of the public. Keep within the reach of the face painter so it's always visible to the painter. Replace the lids on products when taking an extended rest. Do not leave paints unattended. Um, and here we've got another one. Say paintbrush to the eye. Okay, we've got severities quite high on that, so we're looking maybe eight, nine. Okay, likelihood is probably one out of ten. It's very, very low. Um, rate five. And I've put, do not allow people to crowd the face painter and keep a safe distance of one metre from the face painter and the queuing guests. Again, with COVID, if you're in areas where COVID is at high, the numbers are getting high, you would then refer to your social distancing if needed to. Um, we've got, I personally place my hand lightly under the client's chin so I can identify any sudden movements or jerks. This gives me an early indication of where I need to move my brush. Um, children tend to jerk their heads away when they initially feel the wetness and coldness of my paints. So by holding their chin gently, I can guide their heads. I am prepared for this as a natural reaction to smaller children. Um, I've put wriggling children or persons exhibiting muscle control difficulties or involuntary movements, such as Tourette's, should not be painted near the eye with paintbrush. I will simplify my designs to accommodate and I put I will not paint anyone who is under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Um, I would specify though if you are doing more club nights and hen -dos and things like that, that might be something that you might want to play with there. Um, so there are just a few things there. Like I said, you can have other things if you've got your gazebo if you're using a gazebo you need to maybe look at the risk assessments regarding that and assess those um, such as making sure it's anchored correctly making sure your lighting's right that it's pack tested where it needs to be for your american friends pack testing in the uk is like electrician tested to make sure that it's safe to be used in a public area um, 
I'm just thinking signage, things like that. That might need to be put in if you are going to a bigger event. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that needs to go into risk assessments and it's something that needs to be thought about a lot, okay? And then I've got, just at the end of my risk assessment, I have all of the products used by Fantastic Faces of the highest quality, all brought within the EU. Again, I'm gonna have to look at changing that with Brexit. All ingredients can be found online and and the packaging all glitter and bling is cosmetic grade suitable for the face not just nails all my equipment is clean regularly and i follow strict cleaning schedule when working allergic reactions are not unheard of but are uncommon usually guardians will ask if they are unsure and i can provide a patch test to the colors in the design if they like when applying glitter and bling i discuss the chance of allergies when using aloe gel I do plan to switch to an alternative I believe I have found in the next few months. I found that alternative, so that's not something I need to... Like I said, your risk assessment needs to be upgraded, okay, regularly. Um, I have, And then just I put what experience I have and that I've seen many things change over that period and I have an in-depth understanding of the face painting industry. So it's not as scary as you first think. But even just going through it basically with you now, I've identified things that I need to upgrade. So don't be scared of paperwork and don't be scared of providing these things because you do need to provide them. And as you get bigger gigs and you get, um, I don't want to say more prestigious gigs because that's not fair. Um, but there are certain types of gigs that you need to provide these things for. So just be aware of that and be aware that when sharing documentation and things as well, if you have borrowed someone else's to maybe look into it in depth and think, is that really relevant for my business? Because it, it's, it's, it's a sense of pride of being able to say that this is mine, I've done this, and yeah, it works for me. Um, please, if you've got anything to add to what I've said, or if, things are different in the US or in Canada or wherever you are we'd love to hear about it don't forget because I'm based in the UK sometimes things are slightly different and things get lost with you know different um, ways that, that things are done so please if what I've said doesn't apply to your country we'd love to hear how it how it works for you so but I think I've covered everything and a quick video um, and like I said if there's anything you guys feel that you can add we'd love to hear so thank you so much for watching and bye